and goes down with the frost arrow in the back there. Uh, this is really good positioning here. Ideally, you want to have this positioning where you have your meat up front and your range behind. So this is good positioning for both armies, um, or both teams. Unfortunately, all the focus fire from, you know, the, all that range, the summons, the normal damage from those spellbreakers, they're not really taking a lot of hits. And now we have bears out for the, uh, from the, for that night elf player. It's going to be really, really bad for all those fiends. Just lots of counters to the actual DPS, and they can easily break through whatever little grunt raider army that's holding the front lines here for these fiends. So, kind of a, a, a strange move. I know when I typically play or uh, undead and orc as a two v two. I told you before, guys, before that I play that with my uh, girlfriend sometimes. Uh, I typically like to go dual barracks and make a lot more grunts because uh, grunts, I mean, uh, really, really good units late game and they also do really, really good job of holding the front lines, which is exactly what you need in that kind of matchup. So uh, dual barracks may be a little bit better to be able to really produce those grunts and uh, quickly fortify your army in case you lose any big fights there. So that was the 2v2 game. Uh, I talked a little bit, probably too much crazily about all that insane stuff. Get it synced up at the 1 minute mark, 1x speed. Fog of War off from um, uh, Ghost's point of view. Let's go ahead and get it unpaused. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, unpaused. Alright, so we're unpaused now, and we're with the Human Witnesses cross map on uh, Lost Temple. This is the ROC version of Lost Temple. Actually, in most tournament games, you won't see the TFT version. Uh, I don't really know why. I think because the creeps are a little bit different, or maybe people are just so used to seeing the ROC version. You notice that the human player, uh, aside from spawning cross map, um, has also opted for uh, a very open bases line with his farms kind of guarding his PL line, which is a little bit strange, but works for him, obviously. Now, uh, Pato is actually a Night Elf player, but if you saw loading up the replay, he uh, chose random. Uh, it was maybe a mistake, but he got Night Elf, so that was good for him. Um, so it kind of gives a little bit of an advantage uh, to uh, him in this instance. He's uh, a Night Elf player, so he knows how to play the race, and now the human player doesn't know what race he actually is until he just now scouted him with a uh, militia there, saw that he had a wisp, so he knows he's Night Elf. But he doesn't know that he's not opting for a demon hunter, which I think Pato is actually known for going on standard cookie cutter stuff. So playing random or playing as random and opting for this warden, as you see as his first hero, is uh, not going to be something that is very expected by this uh, human player here. So <clears throat> the idea behind going Mountain King first is you want to be able to creep him as fast as possible. You want to get him those high level bolts. Uh, bolt, as you guys know, is uh, for 75 mana will do 100 damage at level 1 and stun units for 5 seconds and heroes for 3. So at level 1, very, very useful skill. Um, it's even, it's you notice that he actually used a bolt to try to help him creep. I do that all the time when I'm practicing using the Mountain King. Uh, not a bad idea, especially when you're up against someone who's a Night Elf player. You might be up against Mana Burn and you don't want to waste those um, Mana Burn from the Demon Hunter. You don't want to waste the mana from that. You notice that a Wisp was brought out by Pato to try to do some uh, detonate here on the uh, Mountain King, again, just to dissipate his mana, but a Bolt's going to go off on this Wisp here, um, kind of in the middle of the map to kill it off. Negates the damage, but does absorb a Bolt, but he still has one left versus this Warden, who's got full mana, full HP, and has opted for Shadow Bolt uh, second. O but it's only a Warden versus three Footmen uh, and the Mountain King. Fortunately, the Mountain King was starting to creep, and he got hit by the creeps here, so the Warden's got a good reason to stay. The Mountain King's still taking lots of damage from these creeps. Shadow Bolt goes off on this Mountain King. It's kind of a toe-to-toe -to -toe battle here. Not enough mana for another Bolt, but he's going to toe-to-toe uh, this versus the Warden. And it looks really, really bad for this Mountain King. A second uh, Shadow Bolt goes off on him. And I'm going to be very surprised, I was very surprised when I first saw this, but the Warden does die, and the Mountain King ends up living, uh, even taking all those hits, so... Man, very durable hero. And right next to the Fountain of Health, he's going to be able to withstand the rest of the damage from that Shadow Bolt and heal up his Mountain King. He now has four footmen. None of the footmen were taken out by either Creeps or the Warden Harass there. So he didn't lose anything but mana from Bolt. Now, that's the one thing that you got to worry about when going Mountain King first, is you don't have the... Um, the mana regeneration of Brilliant Sword for your Archmage. So uh, don't be afraid to buy, build that shop relatively early. Uh, you notice he built it now, he's like halfway through his tech, so he built it a little bit early. Another thing you want to notice that this human player is not opting to do is, uh, and same thing with the Night Elf player actually, they haven't really opted for a fast expansion, although I do notice that the Night Elf player is expanding now. It's not necessarily a fast expansion. I think the Night Elf player is going for this, assuming that the human player is fast expanding, and this is the typical Night Elf counter to a human fast expansion on Lost Temple, is to create an expansion of their own. So, uh, 
kind of nice that uh, the human player has kind of a he just doesn't like the way that maybe a lot of human players build a lot of guard towers and they fast expand a lot of temple. He's trying to make the game more about himself and more about the strategies he goes. Uh, so again, really using that fountain of health uh, in the middle of the map is key on Lost Temple, as any orc player will tell you especially. Um, that center fountain of health is one of the key creep camps and also something to, to use at nighttime when the creeps are asleep on the ROC version. You can, um, I actually don't know if it's the same on the TFT version. You can heal up your units and your heroes. So you notice he's taken a lot of the, brud the brunt of the damage on his Mountain King, because his Mountain King's durable. His Mountain King now has Ring of Protection, so he's got five armor on his Mountain King, uh, 775 HP. Uh, it's not uncommon to see high-level Mountain Kings with over 1,000 HP, so it's definitely something nice. Again, he's starting to fight off with a Bolt. And he has gone for pa uh, ba his passive bash is his secondary uh, ability on that. So passive bash definitely a really good uh, I idea. I think going clap and bolt at the same time, unless you have like a lot of intelligence items on your mountain king, is not necessarily a really good move because it's very very mana intensive. So you'll have to have mana pots, and even versus cookie cutter night elf strategies, you're gonna have to worry about uh, mana burn. And if you're going clap and bolt, I mean your mountain king's really not that great. Now let's take uh, a look at Bash real quick while they're creeping this camp. Uh, the Knight of Player is going to come in here and try to uh, creep jack the Noel Overseer that isn't being focused now. So we'll go over that in a second, but uh, we're going to see Book of the Dead drop from this one. And uh, I believe Scroll of the Beast drops from the second one. So while they're uh, accumulating that, now that I spoiled it for you, uh, Bash does a 20% chance to do an extra 25 damage and stun for one second on a hero and it stuns for uh, uh, two seconds I believe on uh, two seconds I think on on the ar on regular units like on archers and things like that so really really good ability I mean you get a bash off and then a storm bolt I mean you got a lot of stun there and a lot of extra damage on that unit it's almost like a critical strike with a disable except you know obviously it doesn't do as much damage as a critical strike but having that disable is kind of the, a really really nice thing here so Book of the Dead used really really early for this uh, for the human player to try to ch chase back this uh, Night Elf player he's uh, instead bringing his footman back knowing seeing all these archers here as being a bit of a problem uh, Wisp brought along here for the Night Elf player to try to detonate on this Book of the Dead. Ooh, really, really nice detonate there. Kills off a lot of the Book of the Dead and on the Mountain King. Completely takes off his mana here. Ooh, uh, two bashes, uh, passive bashes went off. Three bashes now on, on these archers. Uh, Night Elf player is going to move that last one back, and the, the human player says, I don't have anything with me. This Night Elf player uh, doesn't have enough mana to chase me with his Shadow Bolt, so I'm okay running back. He does have a Scroll of Town Portal, but... No use using it and wasting it if you don't have to. He is creeping his expansion spot and fortifying it with some uh, arcane towers, not not guard towers, at his uh, ex at his uh, natural expansion. He's creeping it with his paladin, which he's opted for a secondary hero. Uh, ideally, you want to wait until your your hero is at least level at least level four. And in a lot of the strategies I see with uh, players going Mountain King first, is they wait to even make their secondary hero until their Mountain King is at level five. Because uh, that level three storm bolt is so so powerful, and you don't want to have the global experience kind of spreading out on both your heroes there. So if your uh, primary hero is level five, um, you can back off your primary hero, and your secondary hero will get the majority or all of that experience. So anyone can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's how it works. So now you notice the, both uh, he's bringing a lot of uh, scrolls of regeneration and uh, clarity pots from his shop. Uh, this is again the counter to the fact that the Mountain King doesn't have a high mana pool and needs that mana regeneration uh, to continue storm bolting. So uh, both putting that on his paladin as well for uh, increased uh, healing with his flash shield. Really, really good combo here. You notice now even though the Sioux players, uh, the Night Elf players, got like a lot of archers, he's running back from you know four or five footmen and uh, the Mountain King and the Paladin. So a lot of damage being dealt there. Only one archer killed, maybe two if they can catch up to this one. Paladin such a slow hero and such low damage. So attacking. Oh, the archer goes back, so he's going to get the kill on that. <sighs> and another archer down to Bolt. You see, that's, it's almost as like a free kill. It's like having Coil on a on a low HP unit, you know, level three Coil at level uh, four Mountain King, you know, except it does stun and a lot of damage, so... The new player now notices that the United player has had the expansion, but in checking the amount you can tell how long the expansion's been up, and he realizes that it's been up for a little while, but it's not quite a huge threat at the moment.
but he does want to be able to take that out. He sees all these archers, and now he sees Hippogriff, so, I mean, the human player's got to be thinking, wow, this is kind of a strange strategy. We're seeing Ward first, and now we're seeing Hippogriffs, and with all these archers, that can usually only mean that we're going to be seeing uh, mounted Hippogriffs.